everyone gets fails in 3D printing. Let's go over some common ones and the solutions for it. What's going on? I'm Dylan from Saturday Morning Props where I teach all things 3D printing. Things from tips and tricks all the way up to full Iron Man suits. In this video, I wanna showcase some of the fails that I've had throughout the years and the solutions that I have for them. Let's get into it. One of the fails that I had a lot when I was first starting out was clogs and under extrusion. When I first started, I was using a CR10 that had a Bowden tube set up. So it had the extruder farther away, not one of the direct drive kind of models. And so with that, when you have a Bowden tube, the nozzle sometimes wouldn't go all the way to the Bowden tube. That little coupler would wear out and the tube would kind of back out and it'd create a gap or the nozzle wouldn't reach all the way to it. And you get a small gap there, which would create a partial clog or under extrusion and the prints could just kind of crack apart. Also, if you end up cutting the Bowden tube at a slight angle or something like that, when it would meet up with the nozzle, there'd be a gap as well. So you had to be perfectly straight on that cut. The most common fix of that was actually a company called Micro Swiss. They are super well known for their full metal hot ends. And so what that would be is the, the hot end would go all the way to the very top. So there was no part where that Bowden tube came down into the heat block. It stopped all of those gaps. I've actually put those on my new age printers as well. The K1 Max makes it kind of hard to change out nozzles when you need to. And so I end up upgrading to a hardened steel nozzle and upgraded to their style hot end because it allows you to change nozzles on the fly rather than having to disassemble the entire thing. It's a super easy upgrade and there are amazing tutorials out there on how to do it and it takes no time at all. But they are a great upgrade for old printers and bringing them into the new age and also for the new age printers to just upgrade them and make the nozzle change easier. The second fail hurts me so much and that's power failures. I don't know what is wrong with my house. It's not an old house, it was made in like 2016, but for some reason I will get power flickers and things like that all the time. And I know printers have print resume and things like that, but besides the bamboo, they have almost never worked well for me. For the Elgu specifically, that one has been a nightmare. There's been times where when the power flickers, it acts as if I had like reset the whole board and I lose all my bed leveling information. Or if it does work and it doesn't do that, the print heats up on top of the print and it melts the print there. That printer is huge, so you wanna print big things, but that means it's gonna be printing for like five days and just having no peace of mind of whether or not that thing was going to stop and lose giant pieces like this. And yeah, you could end up, you know, measuring it out with calipers and trying to reprint it or going into the G-code, all those crazy things. The solution for me was a Goldmate surge protector power supply. Not only does it protect the device from, you know, overflow charges and all those kind of crazy things that a surge protector should do, but it also has a battery pack in it that allows the printer to keep running if the power does go out. This thing is seriously awesome. It uses lithium iron phosphate batteries in it, which are a step above regular lithium that you're used to. They're safer and they have a longer shelf life and lifetime in multiple power cycles. It's really great. It has four outlets so I can run multiple printers off of it if I need to. Like I said, for me, it was like these power blips in my house that were just a flicker in the power. And so this thing is perfect for it. Now I can run those really long prints when I'm gonna be working on full size Iron Man suit pieces or droids or things like that where I have to run it for a long time. Now I'm so much more confident on setting it on there as if I get that flicker, nothing happens. Another issue with printers print resume features is often the bed cools down. And when the bed cools down, the print kind of breaks free from the bed. You try to start resuming the print, it looks like it's doing well and it moves and it falls over and then it's ruined. The Elgu would also get a layer shift like every time I would try to print resume as well. It would heat up, which was melting and ruining part of the print as well. But then what it would do is after it heated up, it moved away. Why would it not heat up over here? It would move away and then come back and every time it came back, I swear it was off by a layer. I'll have a link to the Goldmate in my description below and a 10% off coupon. If you're liking the content, like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below, what's your worst fail that you had? Another fail that happened a lot really early on was spaghetti, mainly from the print breaking free, falling over, and then it just continuously printing while I was in bed or something like that, sleeping, not seeing the print. And often that comes from bad bed adhesion. For my CR10 printers, I actually end up getting this caliper off of Amazon and I 3D printed a mount where I could stick it onto the hot end and I would do the paper test and take that caliper all the way around the bed and it made sure everything was trammed evenly. Nowadays, a lot of these printers have BL touches or different things like that, a scanning system, 
but they're still not perfect. For the K1 Max, I've had to shim the beds and you can look that up to see how to make the bed more level on the K1 Max. And the Elgus, I've struggled with bed adhesion no matter what. I still went back to the paper test. I used to also use the little metal shims to make sure it was a perfect, you know, 0.18 or whatever off of the build plate, but that didn't work for me. The paper test ended up working way better going around all corners and bed leveling it. And still that one was a little rough. And use the glue stick. I know everybody wants to be better than the glue stick, but they pack it into the printer for a reason. The glue step seriously helps, and even in the K1 Max directions, it tells you to apply the glue stick. Don't let your ego ruin some of your prints. Another set of fails is using old or moist filament. I've had prints fail where the supports would get knocked over and things like that because it had been stringing a ton and just adding more plastic all over the place because it was nasty moist filament, or it was just like brittle and terrible. So what I use to fix that is a filament dryer. This gives me really consistent prints. I've used filament dryers from really early on. I had old Creality ones, one just died on me. And now I've upgraded to the Creality Space Pie filament dryer. You can get them over at 3D Uncle. I'll also try to link them down below. The dryers are awesome. If you've ever gotten a filament spool out of the package even that is brand new, sometimes you'll see that the plastic wrap isn't shrink tight to it, it's not airtight. You wanna get that moisture out. With filament dryers, it also is a really nice spool holder. You don't have to have your filament on the back of the machines anymore. You can put it off to the side when you put it in there. They've got bearings and rods in there that allow it to smoothly roll and it's really nice. It was a game changer for my CR10s where I used to have to mount the spool on top of the box off to the side. I loved putting it in a filament dryer where you get the added benefit of it getting the dehydration and everything like that. And then on top of that, it just being a really smooth output. I highly, highly recommend a filament dryer of any choice. And the last one is bad supports. Helmets like Magneto and things where you have an upside down triangle are super hard to support at times. I had this helmet fail a million times trying to catch this little triangle. A common reason for that is if you use auto supports, you have to extra support these things. So if you have your support set to something like, I don't know, 40 degrees or 15 degrees, whatever the auto setting is there, it may think that only this sharp edge needs supporting, but in reality, you need to brace this so that it has a stronger support as it goes. It's never fun trying to catch the triangles of prints, but you've got to extra support that there. Make sure you're covering good angles. You'll learn what your printer can and cannot do, but yeah, triangles, make sure you extra support it, and then make sure you're not just catching a certain edge. If it's a big lip or something like that, you need to make sure you're getting the whole thing not just the tiniest little fraction there. I've seen people support things and it's the tiniest little blade of support there. Paint on extra there to give yourself a little bit more support. A successful print is so much better if you have to waste a little bit of extra filament to support a little bit more. Having that success and peace of mind is a good thing. Hopefully this video is helpful for you. Watch another one after this, like how to size helmets. Love you guys. Peace.